Welcome to Round Glass. I'm Nitya Shanti. Thank you so much for joining me for this session, Tapping into Joy, in honor of International Self Care Day. I'm glad they made a day like that. <laughs> Today, we'll be focusing on the ancient practice of mudita. Mudita is a word which comes from the Pali language, it means appreciative joy. And it is one out of four qualities the Buddha encouraged us to develop. These four qualities are called the Brahma Viharas, and they're the highest states of emotional well being. And Mudita, in particular, I think is very suitable for us to explore on this day, the International Self Care Day. I'm going to be combining this ancient practice with a more contemporary practice. It's also called tapping. And it's going to be an interactive session. I'm going to be taking your questions at the end as well. So join me for the session. Let's actually start with a bit of a question to get you involved in this process. And here's the question. What is something many people have praised you for, but you still don't believe it's really you? Has that happened to you? So I'd love for you to take a moment and type out your responses. What is something that many have praised you for, but somewhere inside you have a hard time believing that's really you? I can see someone typing that, oh, you've been praised for being a great father, but you still don't believe it. Fascinating. Right? So, other people see you as a great father, but you have a hard time seeing that. Interesting. And someone saying that they've, they, have, they have trouble believing that they're intelligent or funny. Uh, I see this quite a lot. People say, oh, I just can't remember a joke or I just can't remember a story. But actually, whether or not you do, some people still find you really funny. Someone just added that she doesn't believe it when people compliment her for the food she's made. Oh, you just think that they're being, they're trying to be polite. <laughs> All right. Another person says that she's calm and composed when her family sees her anger. Oh, so she can't believe that. <laughs> okay. That's a big one, confidence, right? So people feel that, oh, I'm not as... People call me confident, but I don't think I don't really feel confident on the inside. It's surprising how some, so, so many people who are performers, they inwardly don't feel confident, but the whole audience perceives them as confident. In fact, just last night, I'd invited a friend of mine from Serbia. I had a full moon meditation and she was brilliant. And she was telling me on the inside, she, after, the, after the session, she was saying like, oh, I was fumbling and I wasn't, come on, you did so well. None of us could tell, right? Great. So let's get back into our practice for today. Thank you for answering that. That was just to get you involved in today's practice. Mudita is a Pali word, which means appreciative joy. And what is appreciative joy? It is rejoicing in the happiness and the well-being of others. An easy way to understand this is that it's the opposite of jealousy or negative comparison. So when you see somebody else doing well, and your heart fills up and lights up for them. That would be an example of mudita. In this practice, I'll be giving you a chance to also, you can write your questions down. And at some point, I will also look up the questions that you've come up with. One little incident I want to share, which uh, I think very clearly clarifies what mudita is. I was having a retreat a few years back and I shared this idea of mudita. And one person said, Nitya, I really get it. And I want to share an anecdote. Years back, I had joined a company and I was working there. And it was, it was understood that in about six months time, I would be sent to the US to continue working there. But that six months became eight months, became a year, became a year and a half. And both me and a colleague, we joined at about the same time. And we were both kind of wondering that, oh, we were supposed to be sent offshore. We were supposed to be sent to the US. I think you call it stateside <laughs> and we, uh, and it just, it became two years and the turn never came. The opportunity never came. So one day my friend walks in and he tells me, guess what? They're sending me to the U S and I was so happy. I smiled and I gave him a hug and I said, we've got to celebrate. And that evening we went out and we had a nice party and years later I joined him in the U S. And he took me out for dinner and he said, that evening, 
when I told that to you, I was really concerned because you also were scheduled to go to the US, but they were sending me before you. And I was concerned that you would be upset that this is not fair, but instead you were wholeheartedly happy and you really rejoiced. You didn't for a moment think about the fact that you couldn't go. You were just so happy for me. And that's the day I realized that our friendship is true. It's not just a professional connection that we share. It's a true friendship. You really mean well for me. And that's an example of Mudita. You see, instead of worrying about, oh, I didn't get a chance to go. You got to, that's not fair. He instantly went into, I'm so happy. I'm so glad for you. In modern terms, we have uh, in positive psychology, they've come up with something called uh, active constructive responding, which has got, there are four kinds of ways you respond. When people share good news, we can respond in four kinds of ways. And you know what's fascinating? How you respond to good news is actually a bigger deal than how you respond to bad news. Why is that? Because when someone's sharing bad news, they expect you to be upset. But when someone's sharing good news and you're less than thrilled, then it makes them wonder what's up. Why is it that you're, are you not happy for my success? So very briefly, and you should explore this on your own actually, but very briefly, I'm going to tell you the four ways that people respond. One is called passive constructive responding. So when I tell you, guess what, you know, I, I got a promotion at work and, and it's, uh, they, I'm, they're going to be sending me to the, up to the senior management level. And you say, ah, good. Congratulations. And you go back to what you're doing. That's called passive constructive. You didn't put much energy into it. You never asked me how I'm feeling. You just say, oh, good. It's like, they, it was like flat. It was like, apart from the verbal acknowledgement, there's pretty much nothing else there. That's called passive constructive responding. The second way you can respond is when I tell you, for example, the easiest one is, oh, got a promotion at work. And you right away go into, you know what? Uh, my wife and I are moving into a new apartment. I'm really, really looking forward to it. What is that about? You just got into your own good news. <laughs> All right. So this is called passive destructive responding. You turned, instead of acknowledging my good news, you got into your good news. So it's passive and it's destructive. Why the destructive? Because you never acknowledge what I said. If I talk about the holiday I'm going on without even acknowledging what I said, you talk about the holiday you're planning to go on. And this happens sometimes. We get reminded by people's good news. It's important for us to first acknowledge their good news. This is all connected to Mudita. This is the modern way in which we can understand Mudita, how we respond to people's good fortune and good news. Third one's really interesting. It's active, destructive responding. So when I tell you, for example, you know, it's I got a promotion, I'm going to be, you know, moving into senior management. And you're like, are you sure you want to take that up? Because I've heard it's a lot of work. And I've heard people, you know, in that role, they barely even get to meet their families. And have you asked your wife about it? I mean, it's really going to affect her. You're going to be traveling quite a bit. Now that's active, constructive, uh, active, destructive. I'm actively finding what's wrong with your news. You see, this is an example of active, destructive. And the fourth one, which is the only way to respond that works well and that strengthens relationships is active, constructive responding. When I tell you I've got a promotion, really, you got a promotion? I knew you were due for that. I'm so happy for you. How are you feeling? Tell me more about it. When do you, when do you get to move on to upper management? What are some of the things? Have you told your wife about this yet? And I get really interested and I show my joy and I ask you to share more about your experience. Four ways of responding. And you know what's interesting? You ask people, which one do you think of these four is the worst for relationships? So I'll tell you the four again. Passive constructive, passive destructive, active destructive and active constructive. So of course, you know, the fourth one's good, but which of the other three is worst for relationships? You're welcome to put it in the comments. So someone's guessing passive destructive. Someone's guessing active destructive. Some of you are guessing active destructive. Yeah. Passive constructive. Yes. So different guesses are coming in and so let me tell you what, what it is. What they found is the worst one for relationships, believe it or not, is actually the first one. Passive constructive, because that's the most flat. I've come and given you my good news and you're like, oh, oh good, congratulations. And you never showed any emotion. You never asked me more about it. 
this is the worst for relationships. If you don't show interest in other people's good news. In the other two, okay, someone got excited, they got into their own good news. Or someone got concerned and they said, I'm not sure that's good for you. At least there's some concern there. The worst way you can respond to good news is by being passive and constructive. Let's come back to Mudita and let's come back to applying this wonderful tool of tapping. So Mudita is rejoicing in the happiness of others and with the, in an active, constructive way. Why not? So now I'd like you to think of someone in your life who you think is doing really well. And they could be doing well in their physical health. They could be doing well in their career. They could be doing well in their family life. They could be doing well in any aspect of life. You say, wow, this person is doing really well. Take a moment, think of someone. Could be a sibling, could be a cousin, could be a friend, could be a colleague at work. And as you think of this person, instead of comparing yourself negatively to, oh, I got left out, you fill your heart with gladness. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. Your happiness is my happiness. And as you're thinking like this, try this. You're going to tap some acupressure points. It just takes it deeper. This comes from a teaching called emotional freedom technique, which I find very effective. But without getting into the full meaning of that, just follow along with me. As you're thinking, just start gently tapping the beginning of your eyebrows. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Tap below your eyes. Your happiness is my happiness. So I'm tapping below my nose and on my chin point. And the collarbone. My heart is expanding as I think of you. And side of the body, you can do one side or you can do both sides. I wish you even more happiness, even more success, even more joy, even more peace, even more fulfillment. I genuinely wish you happiness. Your happiness is my happiness. Top of the head. And bring your hands down. Just close your eyes for a moment. Like I'm thinking of a friend of mine who's just in the last year or, year or two, he's done so well for himself. His work has expanded. He's touching so many lives. And I'm just feeling such a lot of mudita for him, appreciative joy. How would you feel if this happened to your closest friend? Wouldn't you be so happy? So feel that happiness right now. Expand that happiness. Nice deep breath. Let's try this again. Think of three people, could be people you know, or could be people you don't really know, could be just people you admire from a distance. Think of three such people that you admire, or you look up to. Uh, these could be famous people, celebrities, or famous writers, or authors, or um, uh, leaders of any kind. And as you think of these three people, like in my case, I can think of some of my teachers. I'm going to think of three of my teachers, and I'm going to think of one quality each of them has. So take a moment and think of, think of three people and one quality each of them has that you really admire and appreciate. Could even be someone from your family.
I thought of three people. Did you did you also think of three people? And one quality each that they have. And now appreciative joy. Think of the first person and let's tap these points. Feeling joy and appreciation for their amazing quality. So start tapping, beginning the eyebrows. What an amazing quality you have. What a brilliant quality you have. This is so amazing. May you grow even more in this. My heart is filled with mudita, appreciative joy. Nothing but love and appreciation here. Nothing but gladness here. And what I appreciate, appreciates. What I'm thankful for, grateful for, I experience more of. So as I think of you and I think of this amazing quality, I'm getting filled with that quality. Bring your hands down, just take a moment. Fill yourself, think of the first person and their quality. And genuinely feeling appreciation and joy. How wonderful and marvelous, how wonderful and marvelous. Take a deep breath. Let's do it again. The second person you thought of and their special quality, their amazing quality. And start tapping. As you think of this person, when you're tapping, you're just taking this so much deeper. You're getting your whole physiology involved. That's why we're tapping. Think of this person, think of their amazing quality. And just thinking of them brings a smile to your heart. Thinking of their quality improves the quality of your life. It's so amazing. What an amazing quality you have. And I wish you even more of this. And I'm filled with appreciation and I'm filled with joy. I'm so happy to know of you or to know you. Thinking of you makes my heart smile. May you keep growing in these amazing qualities. Hands come down, take a deep breath and just be quiet for a moment. Continue thinking of this person, filling your heart with genuine appreciative joy. This is something that can be cultivated into infinity. Nice deep breath. You know, people are familiar with tapping for coming out of what you call disturbing emotions, but very few people are aware that you can use tapping to accentuate beautiful emotions. And that's what we're doing over here. Let's do our third round. Think of this third person that you appreciate and what's their spectacular, amazing ability or quality. And let's start tapping. Beginning of the eyebrows. Side of the eyes. Breathing in and out. Appreciation and joy. Fill your heart and mind with nothing but, the, but appreciation and joy. May you have even more good fortune your happiness is my happiness. As I focus on your amazing qualities, what I appreciate 
also appreciates. What I think about and thank about is brought about. What I vocalize, visualize, and emotionalize is powerfully actualized. Hands come down, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Be quiet for a moment. Filled with appreciative joy. <clears throat> For 10 seconds, can you be in a state of complete appreciation without any other wandering thought? Think of these three people again. Grateful for each one of them, grateful for all three of them for being such a fantastic example of awesomeness in the world. Slow deep breath. If you want, you can open your eyes. You know, my teacher referred to Mudita as the lazy person's way to enlightenment. I really, I really think that's a great definition, and especially on International Self-Care Day. It's a great one for us to reflect on. All you have to do, why is it called the lazy person's way to enlightenment? All you have to do is think of the people you love, think of the people you admire, think of the people you appreciate, think of the people you idolize. And instead of feeling, oh, they've gone ahead, I've been left behind, I can never be like them, which is like holding the frying pan from the hot side. Hold the frying pan from the right side, the handle, and then you can make good food, right? You're holding the same information in an unhealthy way when you compare yourself. So what I've learned to do, and this has been a journey for me, because I used to be very diligent or committed to comparing myself. I had a very strong inferiority complex at one point. And the shift from that into appreciative joy has been such a healing journey for me. And that's why I want to share this particular practice with you. Think of people you love and appreciate. Fill your heart with appreciative joy. You can take it deeper by tapping. When you tap, you're activating your physiology, your soma. And you're going so deep into it. It's not just a mental thing anymore. Your whole being tends to vibrate with these amazing qualities. So now I'll take a few questions and uh, responses from you. We have a question already. How can I use tapping for managing the negative messaging I'm feeling? Yes. So you tune into it. And one way you do it, you could tap the side of your hand. And so for example, someone's told you something and you're feeling, oh, that's, I'm not good enough. I can't do anything. Even though I feel I'm not good enough, I deeply and completely accept myself. You say it three times. Even though I feel I'm not good enough, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though people are saying I'm not good enough or I'm thinking I'm not good enough, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. And then you tap the same points. Not feeling good enough. Not feeling good enough. Not feeling good enough. What are you doing? When you're tuning into the sense of not feeling good enough and you're tapping, you're breaking those neural networks. This tapping process cuts through neural networks. When you focus on a so-called negative thing, you tap on it, you neutralize it. And you focus on a so-called neutral thing or positive thing, and you tap on it, you accentuate, make it more powerful. And that's the unique quality of tapping. Can tapping help with stress or sleep? Definitely it can. There are lots of videos online, of course. You can go and learn a lot about tapping. It's very well talked about and described by a lot of practitioners. What you can do is you can do what I just taught you. You can tap on the stressful events. Get specific. In EFT, we say, or tapping, we say, 
get specific, it works better. So get specific and tap on the specific stressors in your life. And with sleep, I invite you to do a different kind of tapping, which is imaginary tapping. Because if you physically tap, you might actually wake up more. <laughs> so you can just imagine you're tapping all those points. Not able to sleep, not able to sleep. You're, you're mentally tapping. And I find you just do three rounds of that. And most, most of the time, that's good enough to fall asleep. Explain tapping is the order important. The order is not that important. You can jump around. But the reason in the beginning we follow an order is that then you, you remember those points. Because if you always just jump around, then you may completely neglect some point. You may completely forget it. That's why the order is important. But you can, you can even start from here or you can, you, can, you can go in any order. And you can even just take one point. You don't even have to do all the points. You just take any one point. Like, for example, this is a good one. And just tap that one point. That'll, that'll, that'll work. That'll help. Would you suggest doing it right before trying to sleep? I would su suggest doing it mentally, not physically, because that might actually wake you up. Let me see if there are any other questions. How about using a mantra? Yeah, you can use a mantra. One of my favorite mantras is how wonderful. Or you can use a Sanskrit mantra, uh, any one that you like. One of my favorite Sanskrit mantras is Om Mani Padme Hom. This comes from the Tibetan tradition. And Om Mani Padme Hom means homage to the jewel in the heart of the lotus. What is the jewel in the heart of the lotus? The lotus is me. The sunlight is awareness. And my lotus is blossoming. And as my lotus of who I really am fully blossoms, the jewel at the heart of that is nothingness and everythingness. Om Mani Padme Hom. Mani is not M-O-N-E-Y, although why not? <laughs> It's M-A-N-I, money. Money is money means jewel in, in Sanskrit. Om money, Padme. Padme means lotus, home. I pay homage to the jewel in the heart of the lotus. And there are so many mantras. You can take any one of your favorite mantras. You can even use English mantras. One of my favorite affirmations is I wake up in the morning and I say, may I be a channel of blessings for someone today? And I repeat that at least three times. That's one of my favorites. Can you tap for someone else? Yes, you can. Two ways to do that. One is, of course, you ask them. I've learned something new. Uh, can I? Uh, can I? Can I? Can I help you with something? And and if they're if they're open to this, you you say I'm going to be tapping certain points in your face. You can, you can physically tap on others, or they're with you, and you say you follow along with me. And you tap just like I did here today, and you followed along. That's one way to support someone. And there's one other third one actually, which is quite miraculous. You tap on yourself for someone who's not even there. So maybe a friend who's unwell or a cousin who has a job interview or something else, someone someone at a distance, and you think of them and you tap. And it's fascinating, it really seems to work. It's called surrogate tapping. And the reason it works, I feel, is because love and good intentions have no boundaries of space and time. So just do it with an open mind. I recommend tapping you do playfully, joyfully, without worrying about results. And that's the right attitude. Although you get too hung up, does it work, does it not? Forget all of that. Just tap joyfully. If you don't want to tap, don't tap. Just think of it. I just find tapping really accentuates and accelerates everything that you're doing. So great, we're coming to the end of our session. And I wanted to give you one good tip moving forward. Maybe more than one tip. Uh, one is when you see someone who has a good quality and you somehow feel left out, oh, this, they speak so well. Or they, they keep their home so well, so clean, and they're always so stylish, or whatever it is you like about this person. You say, copy paste. <laughs> like we do in computers, we copy and we paste, copy paste. I love that in you, and copy and paste, I also want to have that good quality. It's a fun way of practicing mudita. Right? Another good one is, it's called the awesomeness game, and you can do this by yourself or with your friends. So the original awesomeness game goes like this that you ask yourself, what's awesome about myself? And you challenge yourself that every minute you will come up with at least one thing that's awesome about yourself. Every minute for 10 seconds, think of something that's awesome about yourself and repeat that minute by minute by minute. And in the original awesomeness game, you can do it for two hours. And they say that changes your life forever. Another way to do this is with your friends, whether or not you do it for two hours, just do this. Just find what's awesome about yourself. And then with a friend, so I'm with a friend and I'll tell my friend, you know what's really awesome about you is that whenever I'm with you, I just can't keep a straight face. Like you've got to keep smiling and laughing. You're just such a fun person to be with. That's really awesome. And the other person has to say, that really is awesome. 
you have to own it. <laughs> or, or, and they'll tell you something awesome about yourself. You say, wow, that really is awesome about me. Thank you. And so you spend time appreciating each other. What's awesome about you? What's awesome about me? What's awesome about us? What's awesome about the world? And you spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, two hours. You spend time exclusively focusing on what's awesome. And this is the magic of focusing on what's good and right and beautiful. It's a combination of things like gratitude and appreciation, bringing up tremendous joy for the benefit of all. So thank you for joining me on International Self-Care Day, where I got a chance to share with you one of my favorite practices, uh, the lazy person's way to enlightenment, along with tapping. And I invite you to follow me on Round Glass. It's round.glass slash Nitya. I spell Nitya with an H, N-I-T-H-Y-A. And you can see this session and many other sessions where I've shared some of my favorite teachings. Thank you so much. And I wish you a really good evening or day or morning, wherever you are. Lots of love. Be well. Goodbye.